also mentioned that the other reason you want to have this calendar is so you keep from under committing or over committing yourself because you don't want to have all of your events in one month and then you can't possibly keep up with them all. Um, and it helps you spread things out and keep organized throughout the year in a, in a manageable process. Because if you uh, put five events in March and zero in June, well, you're not going to get any good result because you'll be overextended at one point and then you can't follow up properly. So um, you want to keep, keep all your events nice and evenly spread out. And it doesn't always work uh, that way in practice, but in theory, that's how you want to do it. But then, you know, if, a, if a, something pops up, uh, some like opportunity that wasn't on your calendar, you could pause some things that are not tied to an event and put that in there and then move on. But um, I used to use um, just spreadsheets and traditional editorial calendars, and it was better than nothing, um, but it was really kind of clunky and, and a little bit more time consuming than it should have been. Um, and then I don't remember how I found out about CoSchedule. They probably found me online and I clicked on something because, you know, that's how we do. But uh, I've been using CoSchedule now for I think at least a year. And I, I have a love affair with them. They, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I love CoSchedule. It's my favorite thing. Um, but they have it set up so that you can use your, um, your calendar within their scheduling program. And it works with WordPress, so you can drag and drop things around. You can plan out your whole week, month, quarter, year in there. Um, you can put stuff into a queue that doesn't have a schedule that you can drag in later um, if you need some backup content. But um, I find that it works a lot better for me than using a spreadsheet. Yeah, so 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 just with the, with the co co schedule, what's like the, mm -hmm. the main I suppose goal or, or benefit of of using that? Like, why why is it so much better than um, uh, Excel? Well, I'll tell you because they have templates, <laughs> and templates make our lives more efficient and easier. So um, once you go in to publish a blog post, and this is uh, for WordPress, it allows you to sync up all of your social channels to it. Um, so I've got um, Facebook, business Facebook, LinkedIn, company, company LinkedIn, several different Twitter accounts because I love Twitter. <laughs> and it's also got um, Instagram, which it doesn't post to Instagram, but it copies it all to a clipboard and allows you to go into Instagram through their um, app and you can schedule your posts that you've planned out in advance in about, 30 seconds. So it's real, it's real easy. Um, and it also you, through connection with buffer allows you to post to Google plus. So it, it connects to all the places. Oh, and also Pinterest. So cool. connects to all. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to say that you mentioned buffer there and I was just thinking like, um, the coast schedule sounds like it does everything that buffer does uh, or the, any of those other kind of social media posting places plus a lot more with, you know, posting a lot more WordPress. You, yeah, you still need buffer. You still need buffer. You can't get rid of buffer. <laughs> so you need buffer to work with CoSchedule. Um, and CoSchedule is not a free tool, but I'll tell you why it's worth more than I'm paying for it. <laughs> um, they, so all your, all your social uh, things are there and you can connect RSS feeds to it as well. So if you have a podcast or a blog and you want to, to integrate that, you can, but you, you, publish your article or set it up to publish and either in CoSchedule or in um, WordPress, you can go in and schedule out all of the social posts that you're going to follow up with. And they're different for different purposes, but you can create several templates. So let's say just a regular, regular blog post that is um, about whatever your primary topic is. You would the next day afterwards, send it out to your favorite social network. Like you'll send it to LinkedIn and Facebook um, and Twitter. And then the day after you publish it, you would send it to you know, LinkedIn company page and you would send it to your Twitter again. Cause I mean, just keep sending it to Twitter. And then you would also send it to Google plus. And then a week later you would send it out again and say, Hey, have you seen this blog article? You know, and it'll, it'll pre-fill the title and the link for you. And you could just take, change your wording. Um, and then you could do a month later and you're all still in the same, you're just setting up a template you just hit plus, you schedule it out, um, and then you go down and it'll ask you, do you want to do a year later or a custom date? And you can just set it up however you need yours to be set up. 
uh, and then you hit publish. Well, now you have a queue. So you can say, save queue as template. And the next time you have a blog, blog article, you say, apply template, and you're finished. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And then if it's an evergreen something or other, um, you can do that again, but do it a year later and three months later. You can, you can set it up however you like. And it also gives you the ability to go in for optimal sharing for an evergreen piece and put the proper size image with each individual post. So you'll have a vertical for Pinterest and you'll have, um, you know, a Twitter size picture. And I go into Canva and make the, make the blog post images. Um, I went to school for graphic design, so I can do that. <laughs> if you're not a designer, even if you have the tools, you shouldn't. Just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, fair enough. Um, I think this is fantastic. And this is what, you know, marketing automation really is all about. Um, setting something up once uh, and then, you know, yeah, it's a template uh, in this case. And then just replicate the template each time you need to do this task. You don't have to go through that. Um, process of having to set up that whole uh you know do this do this do this exactly step-by-step um, -step thing it's it's got yeah. a template there it's it's ready to go i think that's fantastic great and i use different ones for as i said a, a typical blog article that has a short life like something that's time sensitive like if it's you know how to come on the scene in 2017 well i don't want to replay that in 2018 that makes no sense but then i have uh, a template for evergreen posts where they're just going to keep going and going and going and then i have one for events um, and it's a six week, you know, set of tasks that will happen or publishing that will happen. Um, and then I have one for um, guest posts if I am posting elsewhere, but I want to share it. Um, and so it's a different template for that because I don't necessarily put that, put as much emphasis on that. So you can have a bunch of different templates um, that fit all your purposes. And once you have one, you can just go in and modify it as you need. So I, it's really simple. I s actually um, found that I saved with these templates uh, about 25 hours a week. I, uh, I replaced an intern. I didn't get rid of the intern, mind you. They're just doing more useful work. 